G'day, it's Duke from UAV Futures, and today we're going to be building something special. It is. Doo -doo -doo -doo. <laughs> I'm going to be showing you how to build a race quad. So this is going to be a 180 race quad and this is the sort of thing if you whip this out and your skills are good enough you can actually expect to win some races and compete against some of the big boys. Alright, we're going to chuck it on the bench and I'll uh, have a brief overview and we'll check it out. Did I mention it looks sick as well? Like, look at this thing. Oh. Now I've got all my components laid out in front of me and I'll explain a bit why we picked each one in detail a little bit later on but so far you just need to know we're going to need a frame, camera, VTX, receiver, power distribution board, a flight controller, antenna, XT60 connector, um, four ESCs and four motors. You're also going to need some wire of varying gauges. I've got a whole box here but I'll explain a little bit more in detail of which ones we're picking and why. A bunch of different sized heat shrink and this will be used to uh, hold some of our electronics in and also protect it from shorting and stuff like that so you need some heat shrink. You need a few of these zip ties as well they're really handy so if you can get some of them track some of those down. Uh, you need a soldering iron and some solder so we'll be doing a little bit of work with some solder as well and also some hot glue so that can't go astray either if you want to use some hot glue on here it will help. You're also going to need a whole bunch of little screws and plastic standoffs and plastic bolts and things like that. But they usually come with the frame and or flight controller as well. Alright, so the frame I've picked is the Armiton F14B and that's because it's going to run 4 inch props comfortably and it's a little powerhouse. So it's 4 millimeters thick, it's a fantastic frame, I've got a review of it on my channel as well. So uh, it's just going to be an all around kick ass quad that we're going to build using this frame. It's also got a really cool little uh, red, green, blue LED in the back that you can program as well. Alright, so here's my frame. It's all ready to be worked on. Now the first thing that I recommend people do is we're going to actually mount our power distribution board in here and tin it up because that way it's going to stay in place when we're measuring out all our wires and things like that. So I'm going to actually mount this one with 8mm standoffs and the reason I'm doing that is because if we put this up at 8mm we're able to make a nice tidy clean build and slide our D4 underneath like that. Alright so I've got my little standoffs mounted in here and now I'm going to mount my PDB to the top noting which way is the front and which way is the back. And at this stage I'm only going to put two screws in here because we'll be taking them off a bit later. Alright, now we're going to turn our soldering iron on. Now I got this PDB and all the links are in the description. But uh, I got this PDB because it's cheap and also because it has a 5 volt output out here at the front as well. So it's going to be good when we're powering our nays and receiver and things like that. So the trick to soldering, make sure your soldering iron's hot. Clean, uh, clean tip, a little bit of solder on the end and then just in and out as quickly as you can. Plenty of solder on here. There's going to be a lot of joins going onto these things so uh, I think you need as much as you can. And we're going to tin these ones at the front as well just here. That's going to be our 5 volt output for our FPV camera and also our nays. The reason we chose 8mm standoffs to hold up our PDB is because that will actually allow us to slide our D4R underneath just like that. So it'll be a really nice, clean, good looking build. Just You can see it just fits in there nicely. Now the next thing we want to do, we're going to attach our motors to the frame. And I've chosen RCX uh, 2205s, 263300KV because these are absolute beasts. They can run 4S, uh, which is what we want our quad to be able to do, jump between 4 and 3 cell batteries. So it can run 4S, plenty of power and uh, really high uh, KV as well. So it should be a, a little rocket. So we're going to attach these uh, under here. Now a little tip here, it is strongly recommended to use a little bit of Loctite. Just here we're going to use the blue Loctite and that's going to stop our bolts uh, coming out of our motors because of the vibrations that happen. So just a little bit, you can just dab the end in and then you're right to go uh, attaching your motors. And you're going to want to try to do it too so the uh, leads coming out of the motors are facing and running down with the arm. Uh, 
Rightio, so here's all our motors, they're there. Now the next thing we're going to need to do is figure out how long we want to cut our motor leads. And I know it can feel a bit confronting or uncomfortable having to cut some short motor leads, but uh, trust me, it'll be worth it. We'll save heaps of weight by getting rid of all this stuff anyway. So I'm finding out how long I want to actually cut them. So I'm putting my ESC on here because I'm going to mount the ESCs on the arm. And if they're pushed right up about there, so... There we go. So about one centimetre for me. If you're feeling a bit uncomfortable and you're not uh, too great with your soldering skills, give yourself a little bit more leeway. You'll have just a little bit of overhang or something like that. I'm going to cut mine short, but feel free to leave yours a little bit longer if you want to have some room for error. All right, now save all these wires you've cut off because these are going to come in handy later when we want to use them in our build. All right, the next step we're going to do before we do all our soldering is just get some things ready. So we're going to just uh, get these ready for tinning. So we're just going to take off the little, I don't know what you call it, strip the wires just here. And we're going to do that for all of these little wires. So you've got 12 of these little wires around here. You just want to pull enough off just for a little blob of solder to stick to. So I've got all the end strip here and now we're going to tin them up and getting ready for joining them to our ESCs. Alright so when we're tinning, same process as before, you want a nice clean tip on your soldering iron and we're going to put a little solder on the end and then it's just very quickly putting some nice solder on here. And we're just going to tin these up. This will make it so much easier when it comes to joining them to our ESCs. So now our motors are pre-tinned and ready to be soldered to our ESCs. It's time to actually look at our ESC. And we're going to be using little b ESCs, 20 amp ones. So these are, excuse the expression, the bee's knees. These are absolutely awesome little ESCs. They've got great performance and reliability. Uh, and they're really, really popular. So there's a lot of support for them out there as well. So what we're going to do, we're going to take off this uh, outer wrap here. Because we're going to have to desolder these wires to make our build really clean. So I'm going to take that off right now. You want to be careful, just cut along the side and uh, careful not to cut any wires or damage any parts of the board. I've got to give a massive shout out to Grant over at buzzhobbies.com.au. That's where I got these ESCs from and I've always found that that store I've got really fast shipping and he's a total boss. So definitely check out his store, it's got a great range. There we go. And so I've done that to my other four as well that we're going to be using in the build. All right, this next step, what we're going to have to do, you've got a couple of different options. So the first thing we have to do is solder these to our ESC. These little wires here, we're gonna desolder these wires here and replace them with the three that come out from our motors. So they'll be joined on like that. And some need to be crossed and others need to be straight. I'll explain a little bit about that in a little greater detail just when we're about to do it. And the other option we have to do by ESC here, we have a couple of things now. This cord here is the signal cord and this needs to run to the Naze flight controller that will be, I'll stack up here on top of my PDB. So we can either leave it at the length it is and you might have a little bit of excess. We can either desolder it and cut it back down here so it'll be shorter in the correct length. Or if you're not too comfortable doing that but you still want to shorten the length, you can cut out a section in the middle and shorten it or you can shorten it up this end and put the pins in here. I find desoldering down here to be the easiest and just cutting it and putting on new ones. But uh, that's up to you. So, and if you're not comfortable, just leave it long. It's not going to make any difference. It's just going to make it look a little bit tidier and shed a little bit of weight. Rightio, so I'm going to cut mine. So I'm going to find out just how long I need my signal wire to be. So I'm just going to put my naze on top of my PDB. All right, so I've just put some extra standoffs on top of the other ones here, and I'm going to mount my naze quickly. And this is just to test how long I need my ESC signal wires to be that actually run from the naze. So just quickly screw that in. Doesn't have to be tight, just has to hold it in place. All right. So if I pretend my signal wire is running through here, my ESC, there we go, it's uh, installed just here. And it's going to need, I'm going to need to cut off about two, two to three centimeters on this one. That. 
and I'm just going to repeat the, repeat the process with the others, measuring how long they need to be before they can plug in just here. So I've cut all my ESC signal wires to the right length, and I'm just going to strip them back a little bit, like so, just enough so I can solder them. And I'm going to repeat, repeat the process with all the other ones, like this. Alright, so I've got all my ESC wires just here, and now we're going to pre-tin them with the soldering iron. A little tip here, some people use helping hands and things like that for it to hold the... Uh, the little wire still, but what you can also use if you don't have one of them laying around is some of this glue tack or blue tack. And if you just push that into there, that's going to hold those wires for you. The next stage in prepping our ESCs is just desoldering these wires here because we're actually this is where we're going to directly solder our motors to these ESCs. So we don't need all this extra weight. So nice clean tip and using the blue tack to hold it down. It's really simple. Again, keep these wires because they might come in handy later on in the build. And the last little part, which is optional if you wanted to, is to, when you were shortening your signal wires, is you just need to desolder these little parts on here, the little signal and ground wire that come, come with there. And we're just gonna take those off. All right, and there's your ESC ready. So do that with all four of them, and then we'll jump back. So now my ESCs are almost ready to be attached to the quad. What I just need to do is re-solder on their shortened signal wires. Now this is an optional step, so some of you might have to, might not have to do this one. So if you're doing this optional step, just remember that uh, on these little B ESCs, the ground is on the outside, so we'll put that one on there. And the signal is on the inside. Look at that. So do that with all your ESCs and we're almost ready to put them on. Also a good little tip, you can uh, just put a little new blob of solder on here on the ESC side of things where it connects the motor wires. It'll make for a nicer, nicer solder joint. All right, now all our ESCs are ready, I'm going to take my nase back off just here, my flight controller. We'll talk about this a little bit soon as well, because I don't want this to get in the way. Now, depending on which way you wire these ESCs up to the motors with these little pads just here will determine which direction your motor spins. So, either clockwise or anti-clockwise. And for these little B ESCs, we're going to connect these wires, uh, so I would guess the top wire to the top pad, bottom wire, a middle wire to the middle pad and bottom wire to the bottom pad. So that's going to be done for this motor, which we'll call motor one. So this is direction just for future reference, one, two, three, and four, because that's the way it is in the clean flight configure, configurer. Um, and then when we get to these ESCs, we want these, to, we want these motors to spin the other direction. So we need to cross one of those wires. So you can go, uh, top wire to the middle pad, middle wire to the top pad, and then you can just run the bottom one straight across. All right, so this is motor one, so we want that, we're gonna connect the top wire to the top pad just here. So that one's all done. You're also going to do this with the op diagonally opposite motor as well. So you want them just to go straight across without crossing over the wires. So we'll do that here, I'll spin it around and we'll do that again. Now, depending on what motors you end up using, you may find yours spin in a different direction. But if, you, if that happens, you can just switch over any two of the wires. So you go, and a good trick with solder is you want to get in and out. So there I've done these two motors one and motors four. Now motors one and four, we need to do the opposite ones as well. So I'm going to zoom out so you can see that. I've done motor one and I've done motor four. Now we need to do motor two and motor three. But these ones are a little bit different because we're going to cross the top wire over. All right, so you can see this is the actual middle wire and I've got that coming out to the, towards the top of the quad and I'm going to solder that in here to the top pad. Thank you. 
and then the top wire from the motor I'm going to solder to the middle pad of the ESC. Don't have much room here though so it's a little tricky. And we're going to do the same with the opposite ESC. Now, so I don't, now that I've got the ESCs on here, I don't want to get confused. So I'm going to put a bit of masking tape at the front of my quad. So that's just going to help me with orientation and things like that because I don't want to wire this up backwards. Now, just before we wire in the uh, ESCs and connect the ground and positive uh, wires just here, we want to put some heat shrink on here. And this will just make sure that there's no shorts or anything across our board and nothing gets wrong. And it will also protect it and stop it from breaking. So just measure up your heat shrink and make sure it's going to slide over so my ESCs are about this let's say that that big so you're going to need four of those and we're just going to slide those down over the wires and over the ESC Now I wouldn't actually recommend heating these up just yet. We're going to wait till the build is finished and then we'll hit it at the end and shrink them down just in case a mistake does happen. Ta-da! So the final part of mounting our ESCs to the quad, we need to actually do something with all these uh, positive and ground uh, cables just here so we can actually power them. You can attach them like this, but that's pretty messy the way it is, so we're going to neaten it up. So we're going to find out where they're going to go to our PDB and then uh, cut them accordingly. So let's start with ESC motor number one. So that needs a, doesn't need very far to go to the ground. So let's just say about that far. Yep, that'll be good. And it's positive is, let's give it a little bit of slack. Say that much. Again, depending on how comfortable you are with doing this, you can give yourself more slack if you're worried about uh, making a mistake. And I guess the less you have, the cleaner it gets. Worst comes to worst, if you make a mistake and it's too short, you can always take the heat shrink off and desolder the uh, little wire there and put in a new one. All right, let's finish this up, do these ones. All right, and now we need to strip all these wires, just the ends of the bits you've just cut off. Don't touch the signal wires, because we've already, we've already finished with those. I mean, just these ground and uh, positive cables just here. We need to uh, just strip the end of those so we can solder those to our PDB. And now we've stripped the ends. We just need to uh, tin them up so they're ready to join. So just before we uh, solder these down and then we've finished with the ESCs, we need to do one last thing, and that has to do with our battery lead. So because we're going to have a whole bunch of wires and things uh, pretty tightly packed in here, we're going to put our battery lead on first. So we're just going to put this, this is my top plate of the Armiton on here, and have a little think. Some people run their battery leads out the side, uh, some up the back. It's a little bit difficult with the... Um, What's it called? With the LED in the back here. So I've had to think of a different way that I'm going to mount mine. I'm going to actually have it coming out the top and then zip tied down. So I'll show you what we need to do in order to make sure that works. Alright, I've got some 16 gauge silicon wire here. And I need to make sure that that is long enough that I can run it from my PDB up here and still zip tie it around the top of my quad. So I'm going to give myself enough slack and let's say, yeah, about that much. So that's how long this quad is going to be needing. That's probably 12 centimeters. Just a little side note, I actually changed my placement of this battery lead. It was in a pretty similar position, but I just moved it to the one hole to the left. And you can see that in this photo here. Because I want to run mine a little bit differently, I'm going to run it through the top here. Alright, so we're going to actually do our XT60 connector right here before we go any further. 
Now I've chosen XT60. Uh, some people use Dean's connectors and things like that, but I think the XT60 is a good choice. Heaps of batteries. Hobby King supports it. Um, lots of other places do as well. It's just a really common accessory just there, and it stops you plugging things in the wrong way, which is nice. Now this thicker wire, you really want to crank up your soldering iron to a bit something a bit hotter, so uh, it can really heat the whole wire up. Now battery placement is a little bit tricky on these quads. You can either do one out to the side or usually I like to do one out the back here and I just zip tie it down right here. But because we're going to put in this LED uh, ring or plate just here, we can't actually do that on this frame. So I've had to think of a few different ways. And the way I'm going to do it, you can do this any way you like and just attach your battery leads here to your positive and negative, uh, positive and negative on your power distribution board, but I'm going to run mine up through the top like this. I've tinned my wires and I've put a little bit of heat shrink on there like that to stop it shorting and I'm going to sit that to the side and we're going to prep the XT60 connector. Now this is really easy. All you need to do, I'm using my helping hand just here, is heat it up and fill the thing, fill it full of lead. Dude, that sounds a bit violent, doesn't it? Yeah, there's one side. And there's the other side. Right, I'm just going to attach my cables just here, my wires. So I've got my positive here and my pre-tinned positive cable and we're going to solder this in. That's one. And now it's time for the negative. And this is the beauty of having a pre-tinned uh, stuff. It just joins together so well. All right, I'm gonna slide my, get rid of this helping hand. I don't need that anymore. And I'm gonna slide some heat shrink up along here. Like so. Now, I don't have a heat gun, so I'm gonna go dry this uh, with the missus's hair dryer. So I'll be back in a minute and I'll show you what it looks like. Now there's one little extra thing I'm going to actually do. I'm going to put a piece of heat shrink across the whole entire part of this. And that's also sometimes too because when you're pulling the cable to unplug your battery or something you can slide down the heat shrink that's on here. But if you're holding on to this whole thing it makes it really easy. So I'm going to go heat shrink that and I'll get back to you show what it looks like again. Right here, so here's the finished XT60 connector just here. Alright, it's ready to slide on through the top of my frame because that's how I've decided I want to mount it. and it will be zip tied down just at the back here and it's going to stick up like that behind my aerial. Well that's the plan anyway. So that's all ready to rock and roll. I'm just going to strip the other ends of the wires so I can connect them to my PDB. And we'll pre-tin them. Rightio, now I'm going to connect these just here. So I'm going to connect my red wire, my positive wire, to the positive side of the PDB. That's this strip over this side, and the negative over to this side or the ground. And there we go, it's going to sit on here like this. And now that that's done, we can actually finish soldering up all these wires here and these loose parts and we can put all the positives over to this panel just here and all the negatives over to this panel on this side. So that's all from our ESCs. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. So there we have it. That is all our ESCs and motors and power and battery plug wired in. So our ESCs are all wired in to the positive and negatives. Our motors are connected to the ESCs and we've got a way to give it some power. And we can give it a little test boot up here. I'm just going to connect the battery. And you can hear those motors there beeping, ready to go. But there's no flight controller or anything like that, so that's why it's not coming any further. All right, let's look at the flight controller next. One thing that is worth mentioning before we go any further, if you've made a mistake with the order that you've wired the ESCs up with, or the direction of the wires or the motors, you can actually change that in B or Heli. It's a special sort of firmware for the ESCs itself, and you can switch that over and you can actually reverse the direction. 
Right now, so let's move on to the flight controller. Now, the flight controller we're going to be using is the Naze 32, and this is a Rev 5 version. And there's a couple of things I chose. There's a couple of reasons why I chose this. One, it's really reliable. Uh, it's simple. It works with beta flight, and it's been proved to work well in the past. There's some other, other ones out there, but this is the one we're going to use in our build today. All right, so to get our nase ready so we can put it into our quad, there's just two things we need to do. We need to attach our header pins, and that might be optional for some of you because you can buy them with the header pins pr already pre-installed. And we're also going to uh, pre-tin these little pads just here so that'll be ready for our receiver. And because we're running PPM, we only need to solder the first three pads. So that's how easy that is. All right, now we're gonna solder in our header pins, and this is really easy. It seems daunting, but trust me, it's a lot simpler uh, once you've done it a few times. So all you're gonna do is slide them in. You can have them mounted around the other way, depending on your build, if you wanna really save some space, but I find for me in the 180s and the way we're gonna build it, it's actually easy just to poke them to the outside. And it makes it easy when you need to disconnect an ESC to test something as well, because you don't have to disassemble your whole quad. All right, so again, we're gonna use our glue tack, and we're gonna jam this in here. So they should be sitting nice and flush. And now we're just gonna solder them in. So clean up a little bit. And it's recommended when you're soldering these pins to do one corner and then do the diagonally opposite corner to hold it and tack it all in place. And then you can go in and do each individual pin. Fix this one up. There we go. And now I've done this one up here and also this one down here. We're going to go in and fill in all the rest. Remember to clean your soldering iron every now and again and put new solder on. Right, yeah, so that's how easy it is to put header pins uh, onto your nays. And that you can actually save a bit of money if you buy them before you, this step is actually done as well. Now one final thing as well while you've got the nays in front of you, you're also going to want to solder up just this port just here and this is pad number 5 and that's going to be for our programmable LED that we're going to be installing later. Ow, I just burnt myself. Bloody hell. Here we go. All right, so now our nase is almost prepped. We just need to put on a way to connect it to our receiver. So I've just got a little servo cable just here. I've cut it in half and I'm just gonna strip the ends and then uh, pre-solder them. And now we're gonna connect our servo cable just to here and we'll connect it to these pads. So the first pad, the one closest to the header pins, that's the negative. Then we've got the positive just here in between and the signal wire is gonna be the, just where the little dash, where the little one is just here. So it goes ground, positive, signal. And we're just gonna attach these like this. And you really wanna get in and out when you're working with this nase. You don't wanna stay around because if you heat this board up too much, it can actually cause some problems. So that's a trick with solder. Uh, just in and out, heat it up, and it should be good. So I've got our nase, that's all done, and it's ready to connect to our receiver. And the receiver we're going to be using is the D4R2. So this is a great little receiver, and it's gonna bind with anybody who's using a, a free sky Tyrannus. Or one thing we do need to do is slide a little jumper over these last two pins just here, closest to the telemetry ports, and that'll tell our nays that we are using a PPM receiver. All right, and to connect up, it's really simple. Uh, we wanna run our signal wire to this pin, and then our positive to the middle pin, and negative, I guess, to the third pin across. That's it, and now our receiver is now connected to our nays. All right, so we're gonna prep our LED ring at the back here. And not really a ring, we're gonna prep our LED lights at the back. And what we need to do, I'm just gonna pre-tin these little pads here. We're gonna pre-tin the VDD, the DI, and the ground. Now I'm gonna use some of these wires that we cut off the ESCs before. Yes, their colors aren't matching and we don't have red for positive or anything like that, but we cut these off our motors and they're gonna come in handy now when we're gonna solder up our ESCs. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to pre-tin uh, all these little ends just here. And now we're gonna solder them. Now I'm gonna solder them facing upwards, going up the board, because otherwise once this goes into our quad, uh, if it's, got, it's not gonna hang down at all because this part is actually where the bottom of the frame rests across here, so it's gotta be this way. All 
All right, and now I'm going to strip the other ends and prep those as well. So for our LED ring, we've just soldered in, we've got our signal wire, then we've got our voltage and our positive, and then we've also got our ground. I've used black because that's what, that's what we had left over from our motors. Right here, so we're almost done with our soldering to the PDB. There's just a few little more step, a few more steps we need to take care of. We need to find a way of powering our VTX and our FPV equipment. So I've got this cord here. We need to solder in our wired up LED ring, and um, we also need to find a way to power our nase. So the first part we're going to look at is how we're going to power our nase. All right, now I've actually desoldered this little wire here just to make it a little, e a little bit easier to see on the camera what we're going to be working with. So at the front of my PDB, now to power our nays uh, and also our LED ring, we actually need a 5 volt output. And that's why I chose this little PDB because you can see right at the front here, uh, it actually has a little 5 volt output here and that uh, changes the current from your battery that goes in here and it'll pu put it out at 5 volts. If you didn't have this, you'd fry your poor little nays that go up in some smoke. Uh, so that's why we're going to be using this. So I've got an old servo connector just here and I've got positive and ground and we're just going to wire this in and we'll be able to plug that straight into the side of our nays near our motor ports and uh, that will power our nays. So really simple. I'm going to attach my positive to positive. And put the ground in on the negative. And while I'm working with this 5 volt output just here, I need to also attach my LEDs. So I'm going to find the positive and the ground. So here is the positive. And bear with me, I know that this is a black wire. Uh, it's just that this is what I used because I had it left over from cutting the motors before. So this is the actual positive. Uh, this is the actual positive wire. So I'm going to solder that on top. And now I'm going to solder in the ground. All right, so we've wired in our LED ring just here and also a way to power our nays board. And now it's time to provide some power for our VTX. Now, speaking of a VTX, we're going to be using this awesome. This is my favorite VTX. I use these in the majority of my quads. The Omway 200 milliwatt VTX. Now, this is an absolutely brilliant little VTX. It uh, has a small, light, compact sort of size. Um, this is a really good VTX. It's absolutely awesome. It can take 3S and 4S batteries, so you're not going to blow it no matter what voltage you put in there if you're using 3 or 4S, and you can jump between them. Uh, it puts a nice clean 5 volt out, or I found it really reduces the noise if you run your FPV camera off this 5 volt out here. Uh, and it's really light as well, so fantastic little VTX, so this is why we, we've picked this one to use. Now this is the cable that comes with the VTX, with the Onway VTX. We need to somehow connect this to our power distribution board. And I'm going to do that by chopping it in half, trying to peel it back and some things like that. Alright, so I've stripped back my cable and I don't mind having this part, it was more just so we could get these two little wires out here without damaging them. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to clip them just here and then I'm going to pre-tin them and solder them to my positive and ground on there, on my PDB. And a good little tip when you're using these really small wires, you can actually just use your fingernails, if you've got some, to pull the plastic off. Solder these up, pre-tin these. Right here, so now we're going to solder our power lead uh, for our VTX. We're going to put that straight onto our PDB. It's getting a bit messy, but this is the last little step that we need to do. So I'm just going to solder this in uh, just here. Right here, and that's pretty much it for soldering on our PDB. So what we, want to do, what we want to do now is we're going to smash it with some hot glue. So that'll stop all these little bits here vibrating off when in your crashes and snapping off and things like that. It's just really good practice to hold those wires down and stop those vibrations. Okay, now our hot glue gun is ready and we're just going to put a bit of hot glue over some of these more fragile little solder joints just here. So the power cord for the VTX, we're going to solder that down. You can put a little bit on the ESCs if you like as well because you can always peel off hot glue if you don't like it. And I'll do the same on the other side for the grounds. And just here where our 5 volt connections are, we're going to put some hot glue in there. We 
We'll put a few drops of hot glue on the back to stop some of the vibrations in our LED ring. And the final thing, we'll just put a few bits of hot glue just here where our little signal wires and stuff are for our receiver. And while we've got it, we'll hit that with some hot glue as well. All right, so I know this looks a bit messy at the moment, but what we're actually gonna do, we're gonna tidy it all up and put it back together so it's gonna look really fresh and really neat and clean, and you'll see why we've taken all the care to cut all the wires and stuff like that. So the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put the LED ring in just in the back here, and I'm gonna run all my ESCs out this side because that's where the nays header pins will be, and then I'm just gonna tidy it up a little bit. So bear with me. Just a little tip too to save you some time, make sure that you uh, remember which ESCs correspond to which motors because it'll make plugging into your nays a bit easier. Now it might be useful to note, I'm lucky because I can see which ones are which here because I remembered, but something you should do is note which ESC wires are which. So I know that this one is motor one, uh, was it this one's? Yep, this one is motor 2. Sorry, that's not motor 2, that's motor 3. This one here, this is motor 2. And this one's motor 4. All right, so here's our super clean uh, quad so far. Just the only thing we have to do is put in our FPV gear and we should be good to go. And this receiver just here will slide just underneath this stack that we've built in the middle. So it'll be a really clean, nice quad. All right, and now I'm gonna slide it underneath our stack. All right, and that's our receiver in. All right, now let's talk about our FPV setup. So I've already talked about why we picked the Omway 200 milliwatt VTX. And here's a couple of other things we're gonna need in our FPV setup. So we're gonna have our VTX, then you're gonna want a little pigtail. Now this pigtail is gonna be on here because this is gonna stop in the event of a crash. If your antenna's straight on here and it's bent out, and all that force is gonna go on here and break your VTX. So we're gonna put a little pigtail in and it's gonna save us a lot of money. It's a lot cheaper to replace one of these uh, compared to one of these. And that's gonna be attached to, to our camera. On the other end, uh, sorry, to our antenna. On the other end, we need to somehow connect this VTX to this camera. And we've got the camera cord just here, and I've got the VTX cord just, just here as well. So what I'm gonna do, I'm going to pretty much cut them, uh, strip these wires down, and cut these wires and join them in the middle and put a little bit of heat shrink on them so we've got these connections on both ends so one sort of runs straight from our vtx to our camera we need the video signal and the ground and then this one here this uh positive cable that's to actually provide power to our camera so the the power is going to run the electricity is going to run from our vtx uh down this and powering our camera All right, so I've got all my wires just here exposed and I can see that there's five volt ground video in and then we've got audio left and right. So we can actually take these audio left and right ones completely out because we're not gonna be using those. And a little tip, you can just slide this under here and pull them out if you've, uh, just lift up that pin and they should be able to slide right out. Ta-da, and now we're gonna cut these and then just tin the end. All right, so what I've done here, you should be able to do these steps. I've cut my camera cable and pre tin the ends, and I've also cut my VTX side of things, and now we're just gonna join the two up. So I'm gonna slide some heat shrink on here so we can seal it up once we're done. All 
And because they're all pre-tinned, they should join together really nicely. All right, so I've got my glue tack and I'm ready to go. So I'm gonna join my two positives together. And now my grounds. And my signals. Ah, oh, my heat shrink fell off, hang on. Alright, now I'm gonna go uh, heat these under the hairdryer and I'll be back. So there it all is in its glory, ready to join our camera, this way around, our camera to our VTX. Right here, we're really close to the end of the build, there's just a few little things to do. I've taken the masking tape off. Rightio, so we're very close to the end. What we're going to do, we're going to connect our pigtail to our VTX. Just like so. And then we're going to push this through the little hole that's in the back uh, just here. So that's the antenna mount. All right, and now I'm going to zip tie my VTX in place because that's where I want it to sit. You do need to be careful on your frame if you've built it in a little stack like this that it's going to fit with your header pins. In this build, I've already checked and I know that it does work. So if you, fo if you followed along with me, you're going to have no dramas. And snip the ends off here so that it's nice and clean. All right, and that's gonna sit very nicely on the top there with just enough space. And now we're gonna put in our camera. So the camera that we're going to be using is the HS117 camera. Now these are pretty much the gold standard of FPV cameras. Great quality, great contrast. Uh, yeah, can really recommend, recommend these ones. I've got this one at Buzz Hobbies as well, so if you're interested, check that out. Now just before I mount it, I'm gonna plug it in just here because it's always easy to plug it in when you've got the top off rather than uh, once it's all in there. Now that, it's, now that it's all plugged in and connected to the VTX, I'm also gonna plug in the power to it as well. And if I plug this on right now, I, you always have to make sure you've got an antenna because that's really important, otherwise you can burn out such a little VTX. Right here, so now that it's all ready to be put together, we're gonna to put our standoffs just in here. So. I love 180 frames, how they've only got a few standoffs. So much easier to build, I think. So here's our front standoffs. Love these cool green bolts as well from Armiton. I think they look fantastic. I really like that. Nice little touches like that make a good frame. Rightio, standoffs are in, so now it's all about putting it together. So this bit can be a little bit tricky. I'm gonna slide my camera mount in just here. It slides in really nicely because it's a high quality Armiton frame. So that's in there, HS117 is going to go between that. And this is where you're going to wish you had more hands because it can be a little bit tricky. Alright, let's see how we go. And don't forget this antenna screw here because this really helps. It stops your pigtail from sliding out. Also, when the top's off, it's a really good idea to put your battery strap through. Otherwise, you're going to have to do what I'm doing and put it on now. It's not too bad. It's just a little bit annoying, so it shouldn't take too long. But just a little tip. It's always easy to do it before you put the top plate on rather than after. Finally, there we go. So there's our battery strap. And now the last two things I want to do, I'm going to zip tie down my antenna, my, not my antenna, I'm going to zip tie down my battery lead so it doesn't get pushed around when it's there. So I've zip tied my little battery lead on here and you can see that's where it's going to stay, uh, just here. And the last thing before I put some props on, I just need to find somewhere to put my antennas. So we're going to put my deep, my receiver antennas up here somewhere like this. And I'm just going to screw in my camera as well. The more you tilt your camera, the faster you're going to be able to fly while still seeing the horizon. So we're so close, there's just a few little things we need to do and then we're almost done. So I've heat shrunk my ESCs down because I've tested them all out, they're all work, they're spinning in the right direction and things like that. 
So that's good. Uh, I'm going to need to make some little antenna mounts. I'll show you how to do that in a second. And then you can either zip tie or crocodile strip these things down here and we'll be finished and put some props on of course. So to make our little antenna holding things here, I'm just going to run a little zip tie through this part here and then I'm going to tape the antenna to it. So this will give it its uh, sturdiness so it won't fall into our props. And I'm going to trim that about here because it doesn't need to be tighter than that. And I found just a little bit of electrical tape here works wonders just to hold it in. Some people use heat shrink and things like that but I don't think you need to. This makes it easy if you ever want to remove it as well. That's one. And that's two. All right, and now I'm gonna zip tie, zip tie down my ESC so they don't get caught and damaged. And now we'll just put some props on. And now I'm going to use some uh, dull props uh, cut down to 4 inch. And the reason is because these are the indestructible ones. So they should be really durable. And also I've got a heap of them lying around. So let's stick them on here. Motors 2 and 3, they take the normal direction props. And motors 1 and 4, they take the reverse prop. A little tip too, you can use these nylon uh, locking nuts and they're going to stop your prop flying off mid-flight. So I'm just going to tighten it up and we'll be ready. And this is what she looks like when she's finished. Beautiful! So that's all there is to building a good race quad. Uh, subscribe for more FPV related content and as always, happy flying! Let me know if any of you guys build this and actually take it to some races as well. I'd love to know in the comments uh, how you go with one of these because I think it's an absolutely stellar little craft.